Rise and crime, everybody. I'm Rachel Souza. And I'm Michelle Chan. And we're back for episode, what are we? Six? six? Wow. Yeah. Good for us. We've made it this far. I'm very yes. proud. Yes. New mic. Look at us go. Yes. We're moving on up. <laughs> well, now that we live, we reside in different cities. Why did I say two different ways to say live? Anyways, <laughs> now that we reside in two different cities, Michelle bought me a mic so we can do it over the phone. It's a good time. It is. But it's not over the phone right now. First, I need to get a laptop in yes. order to do that. If anybody wants to give me a laptop, you know where to find me. Um, All right. Thank you, everyone, for subscribing. Um, do you have any stories to tell from this um, week? I've discovered that me and Ted Bundy have the same birthday. Oh, that's great. Yes. <laughs> that's fantastic. It's me, him, and Sarah Highland. <laughs> Sarah Highland from uh, Modern Family. Yeah. Love her. So... Fun um, fact. the only person I know who has the same birthday as me, and this might not even be true, this, he might just be the same birth month, because I just remember this from, like, old, like, quiz fest magazines, is Carbon Blue has the same birthday as me. Maybe. Really? I'm no, gonna... I don't know if that's true. I'm Everyone check. has the same birthday as me. He's born. Oh my gosh, not even close. What the heck? <laughs> February 21st. Okay, thanks a lot, old magazines, like, quiz fest. You told me that he was a Taurus along with me, and I've been telling people that. Well, he's 30. My whole life. That's weird. He's also married. Carbon Blue's married to who? Um, Sasha Clemens. I have no idea who that is. Whoa, she's pretty. She's and he's model. like, <laughs> he's like, okay. Oh, she's from Toronto. Yeah. Huh. Wait, is he is he Canadian? No. Is he? No. no. Did you know Brenda Song is married to Macaulay Culkin? Wait, what? Yeah. Whoa. The last thing I remember about Brenda Song was her dating Miley Cyrus's. Yeah, Trace. Yeah, Trace. Now she's married to Macaulay Culkin. That's the weirdest timeline. That's so strange. Remember when Macaulay Culkin and Mila Kunis were together for 10 years? Yes, I do, this actually. Is, he dates the weirdest people. Okay. This is not what this podcast Sorry. is. Sorry. A little that was off a tangent. Topic. Okay. So, the short case today, I'm breaking the rules. Okay. Already. Episode six. Rachel breaks the rules. It's not actually a case. I found this article and I thought it was really funny and I thought I should share it. It and it was called it was a I think it was a CTV article and it was called Six Laws That Still Exist That Are Weird. Well that's not what it was called, but it was something around that. Mm-hmm. And I just thought I'd share with you six laws, because that's true crime. It, these are true things that are crimes. Yeah. It's so true. and they're silly. Okay, law number one. I'll just call it too many coins. If you go to a store and you try to buy something in more than $5 of nickels, more than $25 of loonies, or more than $40 of toonies, the cashier can refuse to serve you. Oh. I don't know why. The article doesn't tell you why. It just tells you that in 1985, that became a law, and you can't do it. Probably just for convenience. Or, like, your fake-making coins. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Anyways, that saves me a lot of trouble now in my retail job. <laughs> From now on, I'm refusing little kids who pay in their allowance. <laughs> Sorry, Aww. little kids. You're not getting toys from me. Also, I tried to be funny and I wrote, don't be a loony, pay with bills. Get it? Get it. Not funny. Okay, law number two. No witchcraft. So it is illegal to pretend to do sorcery, enchantment, or witchcraft. And this is interesting. It also added, it's actually illegal to tell fortunes for payment. But I'm like, aren't there psychics everywhere? Yeah. When was his law made? Like, um, oof. I know it said that it was made at a time that it was relevant. Like, there was a lot of witchcraft going on, so they needed so, like, to stop the it. like, the 1800s? But it's still in the criminal code. That's, that's odd. So, psychics, I can see your future. It's, uh, jail time. <laughs> you know there's, like, a psychic convention, like, every year at the CNE? Well, they're all going to jail! <laughs> like, <laughs> unless they do it for free. It's true. Um, also, all little kids who pretend to be Wizards of Waverly Place, you're all going to jail. Or just Harry Potter. Oh, sorry. I never Wizards read Harry <laughs> Potter. You know that. Shame. I know. I'm sorry. Okay. Law number three. I like this one. In Toronto, you are not allowed to have more than two garage sales a year, or you could face fines up to $5,000. Okay. I think that's hilarious. That's funny. So, no more than two garage sales. Law number four. No duels. No duels. You can face up to two years of prison time if you challenge anyone to a duel. <laughs> that's so Isn't funny. That silly? That's so funny. Um, number five. There is a strict law 
against making fake maple products. How Canadian. Yeah. So you cannot make or sell fake maple products. Um, and my absolute favorite one, and this law should be in, in law forever. Well, it could be a king next, so it's interesting. You could face 14 years of prison time if you frighten or alarm the queen. <laughs> what if you're... I love that. Wait, just in Canada. In Canada. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, it's actually an entire section of the criminal code called the Queen's Peace Act. Oh I God, love it. You can't scare the queen. You can't scare... You'd be royally screwed. Huh. Do you think it's like a law in Britain? Probably. <laughs> but what if it's a king? But what if there's it's... this whole Queen's Peace Act? Are they going to change it? I guess. But what if it's um Halloween? No. You can't <laughs> frighten the queen. All I'm imagining is like... So... Side story. I've met the queen. Really? Yes. So I was at the the queen's plate. She was like greeting all the people along the fence and I was like a tiny child and I was there. Anyways, I can just imagine some little stupid kid like me, like meeting the queen and like screaming because they're so excited and the queen gets alarmed and then you're thrown in jail for 14 years. Oh my god, I want to meet the queen. I don't think she knows that's a law. Yes, she does. She definitely does. Does queen, she though? The queen has probably never been scared in her life. I'm afraid she's going to get a heart attack and no, die. No, stop. Stop. I don't want the queen to die ever. The queen is the best. Long live the queen. <laughs> Literally. Okay, so that's my short case, air quotes. I know. I broke the rules. I'm sorry. It's okay. It was entertaining. Good. All right. So this week, we're going to talk about Mark Andrew Twitchell. 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 That AKA. Sounds like it shouldn't be a name. Dexter Wannabe. Oh no. <laughs> I've seen I know nothing about this case, but I have seen Dexter. <laughs> yes. All right. So he was born on July 4th, 1979 in Edmonton, Alberta. There's not a lot about his early life, but I've listened to a couple podcasts about it and it mentions that he's not very social and he's really into sci-fi as mm. he was like growing up. So that's that. He was an as aspiring filmmaker, so he would go online and use lots of dating sites and chat rooms. In the year 2000, he met Megan Castorella, who lived in Colorado. According to her, they just hit it off and he was very charming. So, a film student who likes sci-fi sounds like everybody in my program. Yes, but he Great. was, like, very obsessively into star wars <laughs> <laughs> he would have collectibles and constantly be selling and buying stuff well i know at least two listeners that are too into star wars <laughs> <laughs> so several months after communicating online she flew over and married him in 2001 so at this point she's 20 years old and he's 21 wait so was was this like their first time meeting in real life yes. they just got married yes that's tea yeah However, soon after, she became aware that he had become unfaithful to her many times, and that's when the marriage began to crumble. He was a compulsive liar. He lied about basically everything, like just small stuff or like just not paying the bills, you know? Um, he had a fascination with the internet. He would go onto chat rooms and pretend to be other people, catfishing people for fun. Oh, so not like, hi Reddit, I'm Taylor Swift, ask me anything. No, like he would just pretend to be women. Oh. Like literally weird. just catfish people for fun. I don't know. Mm, how entertaining. I know. <laughs> so early on in the marriage, he asked her a really weird question. He asked her, have you ever thought about killing somebody? I feel like no, yeah, that's a weird question. That's a strange question. That's a strange question. I was like, maybe people just, like, ask that when they're really close, but no, I don't think no, so. No, I don't think I've ever asked anybody that question. I don't think I have either, unless I have. No, I definitely haven't. Did not. She answered, quote, Sure, everybody sometimes gets angry enough to get those thoughts, but you don't act on them because that's not the right thing to do, end quote. And just because, you know, you don't kill people. Yes. Well, I guess that's what she said. <laughs> that's what she but said. But it's also like, no, you don't kill people. But then he says that he has, and that he's thought about killing a homeless person so nothing would connect them. That's what, like, he told her in response. Okay. Uh, first of all. Second of all, you're still gonna get caught, my guy. Yeah. It's really arrogant to think that you wouldn't. Yeah, he's just like, I'm gonna kill a homeless person because nobody would ever know. They get a divorce in late 2004 where she accused him of, quote, extreme and repeated mental cruelty, end quote. 
Ugh. Yeah. I don't... Ugh. Mental cruelty. Ugh. Yeah. But the following year, Twitchell was married again by another lady he met online, Jess. So he's just king of online dating. Yes, before it was a thing. Ugh. Soon after they were married, they had a child, and he bought them a house using fraudulent documents, and he had quit his job, but his wife didn't know that. Okay. So yeah. he's just the worst. Yes. So he would go on late night drives on Friday... And he would work on his film just in a garage that he rented. Interesting. Yeah. So he's doing some indie filmmaking. Okay. And he's living on investors' money because he's, like, convinced them that his next whatever Star Wars parody thing is going to be a hit. Well, I mean, Star Wars parody. <laughs> I don't know. Something, something along those lines. But he had this one film in late September 2008, where the plot line is a man getting lured into a garage by a woman he meets online. And the plot twist is that the killer is a screenwriter working on a script about murder, and he does his research by actually killing people. Oh, so he's now killing people. No, that's just a play that he wrote. No, oh. that's a script oh. that he wrote. so in autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> or what's about to be one, is what I'm guessing. Honestly, good guess. So, the next Friday after this film was released, Gil, Gillies, Tetro, a 33-year-old contractor, had gone onto a website called plentyoffish.com. Ah, plenty of fish. And he met a woman named Sheena. Sheena suggested a dinner and movie, and Tetro agreed. Because he claims that she was just, like, super attractive, super charming, you know. Oh no, it's Mark Twitchell, isn't it? We'll see. So he decided that he would take this leap of faith and go out and meet her. But she was super sketchy about where to meet him. She said that she wanted to meet in, like, in a garage in the backyard because it's the easiest way to get to her suite. So when he got there, he was attacked by a stun gun and then he sees this man in a hockey mask. And then he says in that moment is when he realized there's no date, Aww. obviously. Not the stun gun, the hockey mask. Ah, oh, darn it. I know. Then the man pulls out a gun. And keep in mind that Tetro had never told anybody where he was in this moment. So he was probably thinking he's gonna die. Oh, this is so sad. This guy just wanted a date so bad. He's trying his every option. He finally took that leap and now he's being held at gunpoint. Yes. Then he was pushed to the ground and covered with like, his eyes got covered with duct tape. Oh, wow. Yes. But then, Tetro ripped the duct tape from his eyes and grabbed for the gun, and that's when he realized the gun was plastic. Oh, It was a fake gun. Oh, ah. Yes. Movie props. Look at that movie magic helping that. him out. But the attacker kept punching him, and as Tetro is literally just crawling for the garage door, he manages to get there, and he rolls under the garage door, gets out... But now he's just crawling away, and the masked man comes out after him and starts dragging him back. This is literally a horror movie. Yes. But then he makes his legs work, pushes him off, and starts to kind of jog away. And then he sees this couple. And so he says to the man, quote, this man is trying to rob me. Can you help me? End quote. But the couple did not help him because they thought they were getting robbed by him. They thought that was, like, a part of the scheme. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I so can see that. So they didn't help him. They went home and they called 911. Okay, at least they did that. Yeah. That's good. So no one knew anything after that and Tetro escaped. Good. Good for Tetro. He mm -hmm. really... He... He really... Adrenaline does crazy <laughs> things. Yes, I believe in him. All right. Next Friday, on October 10th, John Altinger, a 38-year-old was on plentyoffish.com, and he met a woman named Jen and set up a date. John was a person that never was offline for too long. He was constantly in touch with his friends. Before the date, he was talking to a friend about it and even shared the directions to her place with them. Just after 7 p.m., he reported that he had arrived, and then they stopped hearing from him completely. So, oh, he was doing all the right things. He was keeping yeah. them updated. He was telling people his location. And then suddenly, silence is never good. Nope. Two days later, his friends started getting worried because he was uncharacteristically silent and he missed an event that they planned. Ooh. And he never does that. He's always on time. 
and he never cancels. So they thought this was super sketchy. Then they received an email that came from him, but it said that he was going to go on vacation to Costa Rica with a woman he met online. See you at Christmas. What month is this? Um, this was October. <laughs> so I'm going on vacation until Christmas. Like, <laughs> what? Yeah, makes no sense. But anyways, that happened. So everyone was super worried when he didn't show up to work. So they called the police, but they did nothing about it. But the friends were super insistent that there's something wrong so they actually broke into his apartment and found his clothes suitcase passport which indicated that he wasn't on vacation good for them good friends Mm -hmm. then they went back to the police and told them everything and this time they took them seriously i like how it took them to do an illegal act (laughs) for the police to listen to them yes so the police had the address to the meeting location where he was supposedly last seen right because he texted his friend with the addresses. So they tried to figure out who rented that place, and they found out that Mark Twitchell rented that place, and he claims that he's just filming a movie there. Of course. Yeah. Of course. But they weren't at all suspicious by him because he was super compliant and was eager to show them around and claimed that someone had messed with the lock. And he's oh. just like, yeah, and I was watching his con- like uh, interview and he was just super convincing, you know? Like, what? Someone got attacked at my garage? Uh, so he's just being like, oh my gosh, the lock, somebody definitely broke in. <gasps> yeah, he was just super confused and the police 100% believed him. Because they watched back the tape and they were like, yeah, his mannerisms sh- indicate n- like nothing guilty. Oof, this guy is, oh, psychopath. Yes. So... They believed him and he was off the radar. Radar. Now, Altinger had been missing for two weeks. Remember the couple from earlier? Yes. Now they were called in for questioning because they thought the man they had encountered might have been Altinger. But the timelines didn't match. And now they've discovered that there's possibly two people who have been attacked. ruh And Tetro had never uh, come forward as a victim yet. Oh, interesting that so. he just... Wait, so he just got attacked like that and never told police? Yes. Are you kidding? I know. I would go to the police station so quick. What? Me too. But he didn't do anything. Late October 2008, police were looking for the two men, so they went public to try to find the victim, like on newspapers and stuff. They were really confused as to why the first victim didn't come forward. Yeah, me too. They like kind of thought maybe, maybe he was like married and he shouldn't be looking online uh. or that he's just dead. Oof. But it turns out he was just afraid that the attacker knew where he lived and was constantly stalking Uh, him. So he was really afraid. Okay, that makes sense. But a month later, he came forward. Thank God. Good, did the right thing. Yes. So they interviewed him and told, and he told them everything that happened to him. Now, this is when they realize that what happened to Altinger is probably the same thing that occurred to um, Tetro. Plenty of fish. Yep. And possibly many more. So they interview Mark again, and he claims that he didn't see anything, and he didn't see Altinger's red hatchback, which is the car he drives. But weirdly enough, Mark mentioned that he had recently bought a red hatchback from a man on the street. The exact same model. Yeah, so the police... Oh, I see what's happening here. Yes. And I wrote, now the police were sus. (laughs) <laughs> well, yeah, they were sus because okay. because it's too big of a coincidence now. Plenty of fish. There's not plenty of fish. There's one, and his name is Mark Twitchell. Yeah. So Twitchell claimed that he bought the hatchback from someone on the streets, and that the man who sold it claimed that he met a rich lady who's going to take him on vacation and take care of him from now on. Sus. <laughs> so sus. That's when the detective realizes that Mark Twitchell is the killer, and now they need to try to get a confession out of him. The detective... First leads him on saying like, oh, you can have, you can call your lawyer at any point. Remember that, whatever, whatever. And then in the middle of that, he tells Mark that there is, quote, no doubt in his mind that he's involved with the disappearance of John Altinger, end quote. So Mark's reaction was like, what, why? And that's when the detective was like, you're, you're definitely the killer. 
All I'm picturing is surprise Pikachu face. <laughs> You're the killer. <gasps> no. No. Why? It reminds me of Avalon too much. <laughs> it's a board game for people that yeah. don't get that. So they interview him and they couldn't get anything out of him. But at the end of the interview, the detective goes, quote, You're not going to be able to live with yourself with this for the rest of your life, end quote. In which Twitchell responds with, quote, You be surprised with what I can live with, end quote. Ew. I know. Oh my gosh. Just I confess hate it. already. So they search his house, his garage, and on October 22nd, 2008, they came across a file on his laptop labeled SK Confessions. So they started reading it, and it soon became clear that SK stood for serial killer. Oh, why did I get that? <laughs> <laughs> the beginning of the document read, quote, this story is based on true events. The names and events were altered slightly to protect the guilty. This is a story of my progression into becoming a serial killer. End quote. He had documented everything that had happened step by step. From Tetro's attack to Altinger. Ugh. He detailed how he had failed the first murder attempt and it matched everything with Tetro's story. Filmmakers be like... <laughs> Then he talked about how he lured Altinger to his garage by catfishing him, then killed him and dismembered him. Ew. Yes. Dismemberment is the worst thing ever. Honestly. Mark Twitchell was arrested October 31st, 2008. Happy Halloween. But they still did not know where John was. Oof. So, and Twitchell refused to tell him for whatever reason. So nine months later, though, Twitchell wanted a meeting, but the condition was that the original detective, Bill Clark, not be there. Because Bill Clark was the one that kept trying to figure out where John's body was, so he kept pestering him. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's... obviously. Good job. And that's when he gave them a map with a location to the body. Oh, what a dick. I know. Literally, is like, this one guy's pestering him so much, and he's like, I'll tell you guys if he's not there. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, that sucks. It's disgusting. Poor Bill Clark. Honestly. And it was a map to a sewer. Ew. And that's where they found his body. On March 2011, his trial came, and he claimed that he lured these men to the garage to build publicity for the movie, and that he hoped that the men would spread the word when they escaped. But it all went south when Altinger attacked him, and he had to defend himself. That's the... <sighs> <laughs> That's the worst publicity stunt I've ever heard in my entire Honestly, life. Honestly, how can you still be so confident that you'll get away with this? That is the worst publicity stunt I've ever heard in my entire life. Yeah. So the jury, obviously... Wait a yes. I think I have an idea for publicity for our podcast. <laughs> I think we should commit true crime. I'm kidding. Guys, I'm kidding. That was the biggest joke. <laughs> I think we should make a movie about what we're going to do and then do it and then write about it. And then produce the movie and tell them it's true events and then still not get caught. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so the jury obviously did not believe him and he was sentenced on April 12th to life in prison with no possibility of parole for 25 years. He's now in the Saskatchewan Penitentiary and he just keeps trying to justify his actions and talk about how they got it all wrong. Well, guess he couldn't live with it. Yeah. And he's called the Dexter wannabe killer because he was really inspired by Dexter. Which I didn't really get because he didn't really go after criminals, you know? Yeah, like... But I think in a podcast it did mention he had, like, a kill room. Ew. In yeah. his garage? A kill yeah, garage. in the garage. But I guess that's what... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what he was trying... Who... Why would you incriminate yourself by documenting everything? <sighs> and then making a movie about what you're gonna do. It's just, you know, not practical. At least you didn't have more than two garage sales a year. <laughs> He would have been charged with more. That would be a good true crime case. They found out because he had more than two, two garage sales, so they went to his garage and found everything. Imagine. That'd be so silly. Can you imagine being that couple and thinking that, uh-oh, maybe that guy's dead? <laughs> <laughs> or being that couple and, honestly, good for that couple, though. They're doing what they need to stay safe. Yeah, at first, I was really like, you're not gonna help, but... No, that's a... Yeah. Your freaking politeness, that's an yeah. MFM thing. Sorry. Thanks, My Favorite Murder, for inspiring us. Anyways, that's, a that's like, protect yourself before protecting others. It's true. And 
you have to sometimes. Like, I think they did the right thing. Yeah, because in the documentary that I watched, they interviewed the couple, right? And the woman was just thinking, oh my god, if they're trying to rob us and then he kills my boyfriend, husband, whatever, what am I gonna do, you know? Like, we better be safe than sorry. And, like, that is such a thing that a criminal would do, is, like, pretend to be hurt, getting attacked. Yeah. And, like, Ted like, Bundy. Oh, I've... There was that case a long time ago in the U.S. where it was, like, somebody rings the doorbell and was like, I'm really hurt. Oh, I need yeah. help. Like, can I please come in and get a Band-Aid? Or can you please call 911 for me or whatever? And then they, they're they like, oh, yeah, sure. They leave their door open and next thing you know, you're the one who's injured. Like... Yes. Sounds like straight from the purge. Yeah. It's also that uh, American Horror Story did an episode on it. That's so scary. Imagine it's just raining outside, pouring rain, dark and then someone just at your door and they're being chased or something. It's like, do you What help? do you do? What? Do you open it? Like, what if it's, like, an old man and he's at your door and he's like, I need help. Like, what do you do? Do I you answer know. it? But what if he's a serial killer? Like, like, under what circumstance should you answer it? Like, I, oh, what? If it's a child. Yeah. I'd answer it if it's a child. Okay. Would you answer... Okay, I feel like I'm very non-threatening looking. Would you answer it for me? No. Anybody... <laughs> It just no- what's his face doesn't look threatening. Ted Bundy. Well, yeah, like that's he's a straight true. white male, so never mind. Yeah, but not but- that all straight white ma- males are threatening. They're not. I'm just saying, like he could tackle me to the ground and kill me, and I would not be able to defend. But small Asian female. Jennifer Pan. Yeah, but she didn't actually do anything herself. Yeah, but she could have if she wanted to. I really doubt it. She could hire someone to do something. I for don't you. know. I I don't know. If it looks like an able-bodied person, if they look like an able-bodied person, then I'm not letting you in because I'm the weakest person I know. And even with some adrenaline, I don't think I'm stronger than the average person. Okay, that's fair. So, no. I think the first thing I'd do... Oh, like, that's so scary, though, because I know back in those cases, they actually put fake blood on them to try to trick you into saying they're bleeding. What do you do? That's such an... Oh. And what if you actually need help? And then they just don't let you in? It's so crazy to think about. Because, yeah, what if you actually did need help? There's, It's such like a... Somebody shows up injured, they might actually need help, or they might be there to harm you. Which do you take? I know so many people who'd be like, obviously I'd let them in, they need help. But my mind instantly would go to, they're gonna kill me. Yeah, I don't even open the door for literally anybody okay i have a story that i'm gonna tell because it's a shorter episode and we have time um i think it was like two weeks ago uh i woke up and somebody rang the doorbell and i went to check the door and nobody was there but i didn't wait a little bit before checking the door i checked it right away Mm -hmm. and nobody was there and i was like okay that's weird so i thought maybe it was the guy who like does the weeds on the lawn you know the weed man whatever he's called (laughs) the weed man that's what he's called okay that's their company. He just sells weed. No, he pulls weeds out of our lawn and pesticide stuff. No, pesticides are illegal. Something else. I don't know. Ir- irrigates? I don't know. So I thought it might be him, and I looked outside to see if, like, he left the pay thing there, you know? Do I make any sense at all? Yeah. Usually he rings the doorbell and leaves, and that's, like, something that's happened before. But I checked, and he was not there, and I was like, okay, that's kind of weird. So then I left the house, and I went out, and I came back a couple hours later, and both of my backyard gates were open. Not one, both of them were. And my mind instantly went, somebody was checking if I was home, somebody's broken into my house, I can't go in. That's so scary. And I was, like, trying to, I didn't go in. I went to Starbucks and I waited for my parents to get home before going into my house. Yeah. Because I was too scared. Not too scared, but I was being cautious. Because, like, I've listened to so much true crime now and I've watched so much that that's something that I think about actively on my day-to-day routines also if you hear booming in the back i'm sorry it's victoria day and there's fireworks going off and True. they're very much annoying me but yeah so i didn't go home because i was too because sc- why would both back gates be open that's you know really sketchy and i wouldn't go back in you either. and go either right no. one time i was in the house and i didn't know this but the window upstairs was open and so i heard someone close the door upstairs and i was in this house <laughs> by myself oh no i would i too would run so i went outside and i called my friend and then she got here and then i went back inside and then we discovered it was just my neighbor closing the window because i could hear him 
Oh, I thought it was going to be one of those things where the wind makes your doors close. No, it was just <sighs> actually someone closing the window or door or whatever I said. But it was my neighbor. I would be absolutely terrified. I would do the exact same thing. It was I would super call scary. someone. I would get them to come over. I would stay outside until, like, ugh. I also, after listening to all these podcasts and stuff, I've started practicing locking my car door as fast as I can. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I never do that. I feel like I really should. Oh, you should. I do. I actively do. I get in my car, shut the door, lock it as fast as I can. That's a good <laughs> habit to have. It is, because I'm terrified. And I'm also tiny. Tiny as in tiny muscles. Very weak. <laughs> <laughs> like, I need to practice this stuff, because if somebody attacks me, they're going to be successful. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, same. I don't know. I think you're more, you're stronger than me. You work out. You're a fitness queen. No, I I'm really not. don't think so. I feel like someone could easily just pick me up and throw me in their car. Oh, definitely same. That's so easy. We are telling people to do this. <laughs> we are <laughs> saying, don't. we are the weakest people. We should be your targets. No, please don't. And also you won't get away with it. We're all, we're too aware. No, that's not a challenge. That's not a challenge. <laughs> I'm not challenging you. No, you, you definitely will get away with it. I don't know. Reverse psychology? I don't know. You're a sociopath if you're thinking about it so yes just please don't any of this psychology is not working on you not that all sociopaths can't i correct myself so often because i'm just scared of being incorrect but like please correct me if i do say something that is offensive because i really 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 don't want to offend anyone i'm so sorry okay well i think that's enough of us just speaking about things so remember if you're thinking about scaring the queen you will be thrown in jail and movie magic can't erase your crimes See ya. Bye. Till next week.